The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, I've posted the first chart, uh, hopefully in the room. I don't know even if I'm in the room anymore. My goodness, something's happened to my computer. Shut the front door and raise the rent. I don't know what's happened, boys and girls. Let's see. Uh oh I don't know if anybody can hear me or what's going on, but who knows? Hmm. No one's contacting me, so bear with me here. I'm trying to get back into Hotcom, so I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm not too surprised because they don't tell me a lot of these things, so bear with me here, folks. Hmm. Well, I could tell a few jokes, but I don't know any. Hmm. Now, this is strange. I hear the sound of one hand clapping. Oh, boy, this Hotcom sure takes a long time to get up and running. I don't know what happened, but I got disconnected. I got disconnected. That's all I can say. Mm hmm. All right. Maybe it's working now. Let me see. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Come in, Danny Boy. The eagle has landed. Okay. Thank gosh. All right, let's move on to the first chart here, folks. I'm sorry, uh, we had a, uh, a power surge. <laughs> well, I don't know what caused it, but uh, it, uh, the eagle's in the pot. The chicken's in the pot. Anyway, let's take the first thing that somebody asked me uh, is, how do I stay up all night long? Folks, it's not, I don't stay up all night, all night long. I am a cat napper. I don't sleep eight hours like a normal person. I never have. Uh, from the time I was a baby, my mother told me that I would spend half the night talking to myself in my crib. Same thing when I went to school. When I when I was an altar boy at St. Benedict's in Terre Haute, Indiana, I would you know ride my bike at quarter to six to the rectory, get the priests up, and uh, you know go in and get the altar wine and all the vegetable stuff ready. And I did that until uh, you know I went into high school. And, um, you know, I've just always been that way. When I got into college, I was a scrub nurse at St. Anthony's Hospital. I worked from 11 at night to 7 in the morning and then went on to school, and I've been doing the same thing. My grandmother on my father's side uh, pretty much was the same way. She only slept a few hours a night. Of course, she had nine children, but that was probably the reason. And I, I don't really need a lot of sleep, but I do catnap. The best place I can sleep in the whole world is on an airplane. I am never awake when the plane takes off. It just doesn't happen for me. I'm sound asleep. You know, an hour or so later, I'm up, but boy, I just, I can go right through that. So anyway, let's take a quick look here. Uh, one of the charts that we were looking at last night that I was sending out to the folks at the, uh, on the subscriber list and stuff was this chart on the euro. You notice we had that beautiful bottom, ABCD bottom down there at that 115.10 yesterday. Uh, and we were expecting the market to rally up to that 61% uh, uh, ratio at 116.40. Folks, we hit 116.45 about 30 minutes ago. We've already broken 25 points, $250 to the downside. So that's really, you know, what I was doing. That was also a 382 retracement of the high that we made back on the 22nd, which was also a 382. So that's what I that's what I do. So don't worry about about the sleep part. Uh, I get by just fine. I'm just not a, a person that can sleep eight hours. My brother-in-law, Mike, he could sleep 14 hours and get up and take a nap. But anyway, we'll look at some of these other things as we as we look at some of these other markets here today. Now, one of the things that I did want to cover is the fact that the open interest yesterday in both the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes dropped dramatically, 2%. That's a very large number because those numbers are huge. You're talking 4 million contracts uh, in the Treasury notes and a million contracts uh, in the Treasury bonds. So that's a substantial amount. That is short covering. Uh, and the market was quite wild. We did hit that 78% level 
yesterday at that 176, 146 level in the bonds. We got to 146.26 on the aftermarket last night. And then, of course, we broke a couple points from there, but it's still early. You know, it could go back and make new highs. The good news today is we have Stan Harley as our guest, and that's going to be always something that we'd like to uh, like to talk about. And I'd like to share something that we got from one of our listeners here uh, at TFNN. He sent a really neat chart showing you that yesterday we had Mercury, Venus, and Saturn above the pyramids of Giza. This happens once every 2,373 years. I happened to be there the last time that did happen. Anyway, you can see how they line up. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know, but it certainly looks pretty cool. That happened on May the 24th of 2018, and I think it looks, uh, looks pretty neat, whatever it means. Anyway, we'll find something else about it later on, probably uh, down the road. Okay, we've had a little bit of break in the market. The market's come back and given back, or you know, taken back much of its loss yesterday, which is really good. And I think, you know, that is extremely important. And then I have one other story that I'll share with you that I, I really think you'll enjoy this. A few months ago, um, one of our listeners down in Natchez, Mississippi, he's a cotton farmer. And uh, how high is that cotton Okay, it's a 25 cents and rise. Anyway, you can notice here that we had this really nice rising bottom line uh, right at a 61% retracement back on April. And he wanted to hedge his crop. And, of course, I put him in contact with someone who does a lot of hedging. And we sort of convinced him that we ought to wait because there was a possibility that we could get 93 to 94 cents for that crop. And he laughed at us so hard that he said, are you crazy? He says, I can't sell what I got. I said, this is to be a little patient. And by golly, yesterday was a time to hedge the crop, and you'll never guess what he said. I'm going to hold out for a dollar a pound. Can you believe that? I mean, that's a, that's a perfect example of greed. But hopefully uh, we'll be able to – I'm not me. I have nothing to do with it. But they'll convince him to do that because now he's increased his income by well over 30%. So that's uh, that's a good thing to happen. That's one of the fun things about TFNN, you know, that is, uh, you know, we meet a lot of nice people. You know, folks, I've been doing this for over 10 years. I've only met two or three people uh, in the whole TFNN, not a TFNN family, but all the listeners and stuff that have ever been um, actually rude or, you know, didn't have anything nice to say. I mean, they tell me I'm wrong all the time. Hell, everybody does that. But, uh, I mean, it's just uh, it's just really amazing how cordial the, the people really are. I was in the Kiev in the Ukraine two years ago in May, and we were giving a seminar there on foreign exchange, Tom Hugard and I, and uh, you wouldn't believe the people that came up and asked to take selfies because they listened to the show here at TFNN and they wanted to know about some of the folks. It, it was really quite cool, you know, to see something like that happen. It was uh, really a lot of fun. We're going to have a break coming up here already. Remember, we're going to have Stan Harley as our guest today at um, – at 9.30, so that'll always be a lot of fun. When we get back from the break, we're going to talk just a little bit uh, about Bitcoin because I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens here in the bit, uh, see what's going on. But we'll watch that when we get back from the break, which should come up uh, right now. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I wanted to put up the chart. I uh, don't have the chart for Bitcoin. I'm sorry. Uh, I lost it. But I wanted to put up the chart here of both wheat, uh, wheat and beans because we had those big report. Uh, well, not report. It was the weather uh, over the weekend that was extremely bullish. And, of course, you know, the markets reacted negatively. And then supposedly a little after that, the weatherman came in and said, oops, I think I might have made a mistake, but I don't know. But I did want to share with you. Uh, about technical analysis because you know I, I really believe very very strongly in it and the chart that I'm going to put up next is the one that we had in the 24-7 uh, newsletter and this was the uh, trade for uh, Christmas wheat December wheat you'll notice here that the 78 percent level came in at 587 and three quarters the high during the big drought related thing Sunday night Tuesday Monday night was at 588 one quarter cent higher than that number and it's broken 25 cents, $1,250. Now, how much further it's going to go down, I don't know. I didn't know if it was going to go up or not. We never know whether they're going to work or not, folks. They're just patterns. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But look at the bottoms in wheat, and you'll notice that those bottoms are all related to the full moons or new moons. And what was it yesterday? It was the full moon. So that wheat really does react nicely. If you'd like to more history on that, you should pick up Dr. Andrew Lowe's book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis. The first 50 pages or so of that book, he talks about the original technicians, which they were, were the astrologers, and how they used wheat and Mer uh, excuse me, the moon and Mercury, and the sun to predict prices uh, for wheat going back to the Babylonians and the Sumerians, you know, five to seven thousand years ago. That was before we had a ticker tape. So anyway, we'll um, we'll keep an eye on these grains. Where I think the next time we get a bottom here, which will be in about hopefully two well hopefully is a terrible trading word, in about two weeks we'll be able to find you know something that looks uh, you know really nice. That's the main thing that we'd like to see. Um, okay, let's do uh, let's move on here for just a second here. Uh, they're just telling me now that that high in the cotton last night was 93.70, and the last on it is 89.50 so it dropped 400 points which is two thousand dollars so that's a you know substantial amount so we'll take a look at it yes it was a textbook three drive to a top pattern we had uh, in the in the soybeans themselves you know we had a toy uh, the, the soybeans had a different uh, a different pattern it had a quad 
tr uh, triple top. Let's put that up here so you can see that because we, we talked about this because it was interesting. Now, you'll notice here that we made a new high on Sunday night, but we made a new high by one quarter of a cent, folks, at uh, $10.60 and one half. Uh, and that was by a quarter cent of the previous one. So this was in the midst of a supposed drought. Hello, you know, they got to go a lot higher than that to scare anybody. But anyway, that's what happened, and it sold off. Whether it's going to continue or not, you know, we really don't know. We just have to do, you know, one thing at a time as we're walking through some of these. Now, uh, the, the question is, what's going to happen in the stock market? Uh, no one knows, including me. But all I can tell you is that uh, we've had that big breakdown, the start of it, whether it's going to mean a great deal or not, you know, still is uh, up for grabs. But we need to pay close attention today. And the reason for that is the rally that we're seeing now has only been able to make a 382 retracement in the, um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, whether that's going to mean very much or not, you know, I'm not sure. Let's take a quick look here just at the S&P because the S&P has a chance to make that 61% retracement up there at 2712. Right now, what we've done is completed this little tiny ABCD pattern on this 30-minute chart from over the evening. But you'll notice the bottom that came in yesterday. This is the reason why I'd like you to see this chart. The bottom yesterday, you know, right about an hour or so before the close, you notice was making a 1.618 expansion from the low on May 15th. And what was May 15th? May 15th was a new moon. What was yesterday? The full moon. So whether that means much or not, I don't know. But there were some nice FIB numbers there at that time to see if they were going to hold or not. That's the, that's the key that we're watching at that point. I did want to bring to your attention, this was one of the reasons why the market was so bullish in the grains uh, on that Sunday night. Uh, this was, hold, I'll bring this up and I'll show you uh, what was happening. This was the weather uh, map. Uh, that was going on across the Midwest. You can see the heat index. It was the hottest Indianapolis 500 since 1937. And uh, that was the day of the race. And uh, you can see, uh, see, it really didn't make any difference, folks. When these markets are ready to go, they're going to go. One of my favorite stories I remember from Leo Malamba down on the, the floor. I had met him through Byron because Byron was Leo's right-hand man, and he was also running Delsher's uh, desk along with uh, Goldman Sachs's desk. They worked together, and Leo was down there, and he gave uh, 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 Byron an order to buy 50 T-bills. And Byron said, you know, Leo, he says, there's a report coming in. I said, the report will mean S. And he says, why? He says, this market's going up. And he says, how do you know? He says, look at the chart. And sure enough, the report was bearish, and the market went straight up. And they learned something from that. But uh, that's the way it works. Go with the charts are going up, prices are going up. If charts are going down, prices are going down. That's the you know the bottom line of what we're watching here. So let's remember those things, folks. We don't know what's going to happen, but we'll certainly you know find out uh, what is going on, and we'll we'll see. If it's going to happen, yes, Bitcoin has a uh, really nice 78% level down there, uh, David, at the uh, $7,200 per share level. We're trading at 75 and change right now. So that started where well, you don't want it to go below 72 now because that's a really strong 78% level. And we'll be able to look at that. Uh, I will be happy to cover the pound. If you'll give me one second here, all I really need to do here is to grab something and I will be in good shape. Hold on a second. I just got to get it ready. The pound is interesting to me because I think we've got a chance here uh, in the pound to do something pretty dramatic. Let's just do the, uh, do the daily here because we're at very, very low levels. But I want to show you the real important is the is the weekly. So let me do that one first because this is the one that I think means the means the most. We're a little below that uh, 382 retracement here, but you can see I think we're really close to a, a pretty good bottom. What I'm waiting for is some type of an action. Notice on this British pound on the weekly chart here, we did get down to 132 last night, and so if we can close in the upper part of the range this week, that will tell us that our risk factor is going to be only 100 pips. Now, you'll notice that's very close to where those old highs were, you know, way back in 2017. But right now, that's not the easy, that's not the easy trade. The easy trade was, I think, in the, um, 
in the euro because the euro you know made such a perfect bottom yesterday with a big a b c d those are the ones you want to look at you don't have to stay up all night to to find them either folks they're they're all over the place you just have to be a little patient and catch them as they uh drive by the train station that's really what you're what you're trying to do when you see some of these things so keep that keep that in mind as we're watching you know some of these things unfold my goodness we're going to have stan harley on in just a few minutes he bailed me out again god bless him he's always fun to have on and boy he's certainly been spot on of what we've been waiting for so we will get uh we will get stan up here and talk to him about this in just a minute and uh, hold on and we'll uh, get his chart up and then soon we will be talking to him directly from phoenix arizona 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley from Phoenix, Arizona on the line. Stan, are you there? Good morning, Larry. I'm live and well. Uh, we're going to be, what, 106 there today? What does it look like? Oh, oh I think, yeah, cool 106. Yes. Yeah, yes, but it's a, it's a dry heat, as they say in the desert. I, I love the place. I like that weather, as a matter of fact. Stan, we got a question right off the bat before we look at the chart, and that is, um, 
when you did the thing with uh, Timer Digest, how do you get involved with this, and and how do you get you know to be a you know a leader like you were? What what was the process going through? One of our listeners would like to know that. I started my uh, my newsletter back in 1995, Larry, and uh, I actually became aware of Timer Digest because I lived in the Los Angeles area at the time. So did you. Uh, Timer Digest, uh, the leader of that uh, organization was Jim Schmidt, and he was interviewed on Channel 22 in L.A. once a week. And he, uh, right. when he was interviewed, yeah, he would be asked about the top 10 market timers. So that's how I found out about it. I got the contact information uh, for Timer Digest from uh, the station director, Richard Saxton, and I yep. started forwarding my material to them. And uh, they tracked me for about a, a year before they started the, the, uh, the actual measurement. And uh, from that day forward, they've tracked me every single day. So since 1995, they've been monitoring my performance. Boy, Channel 2 was the, the go-to place in Los Angeles when we were there with Gene Morgan charting the market. Oh, Remember yeah. that? Or charting the market, Gene Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew Gene very, very well. And, of course, I knew everybody there, Ron and Sana, Bill Griffith, Sue Herrera. That's where they all started and everything so it's it was really a, a great days and whether well, they're great days now too but those, those were really the old that was covered wagon days actually because there was the very little covered wagon days yeah, yes well that was, the, was. that was the uh, the initial financial news station in the country yes well and what that happened led was to, yeah it what led to fnn went, yeah yeah and then, which ultimately then led to cnbc and now we have fox yep. business and Yep. Well, Bloomberg. what happened was uh, when FNN stopped, um, that was a Merrill Lynch thing, and uh, Sue Herrera was involved with that. And of course, when they went bankrupt, she went back to see it, or to NBC and said, "Hey, let's do this," because it was really successful on the West Coast, and they they took it right away. That was twenty some years ago, and. Of course, Sue brought Bill Griffith and Ron and Son. Of course, Ron runs, runs his own hedge fund now, but uh, that's how the whole thing started. I used to go down every three weeks to, uh, you know, give a show from uh, San Luis Obispo to, uh, you know, to L.A. to be on the show because I, I enjoyed being on TV because it would, you know, be broadcast up there. And uh, my kids would, uh, you know, have my... Uh, have their friends around saying, oh, look, my dad's going to be on TV and stuff. And once my daughter was riding down with me, she said, Dad, now, when you're on the show, make sure you don't say any bad words. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know where she got that idea. I really don't. we got to let another question about seasonals. Um, Stan, do you use seasonals at all in, in your work? Larry, I'm not a big fan of, of seasonals. I know there are people that dump all the data for the last – X number of years in a spreadsheet, add them up and divide by 251 trading days and get some kind of composite average. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I find them all for that. It just, it, it doesn't work for me. Okay, good. Well, that uh, doesn't work for me either. You know, I, I look at them occasionally, but very, very seldom because the charts are what re really mean something. Okay, one other question, then we'll get to your chart here on the, uh, the, the stock market. And that is, why do you pick trading days versus calendar days? Oh, good question. Uh, I've looked at both, and uh, for the analysis, both theoretically should work. But we have holidays, we have weekends. Um, for the most part, I a trading day just it it variability somewhat, and that mm -hmm. any kind of edge I can get, I'll take. Yeah, but, I uh, I agree with that. I'd use uh, I have Newton to a frog, which I have in the past, and it works some of the time. But the uh, you know back in the days when I was at Drexel and I was doing work with Mary Rivers in astrology. The people at Drexel, the brokers and the, the staff there would bring in crazy stuff from the magic world and the world of the underwear and put it on my, my Quotron monitor. <laughs> you know, so it was uh, it was really quite funny. But I'll use anything if it works, that's for sure. Okay, let's go on to your chart here that we're looking at um, for the stock market. This is really amazing, Stan, because you've been nailing this thing, you know, uh, one right after another, and I, I think it looks, uh, you know, really terrific. We're, right now, it looks like we're coming down here into June something for a 55-day uh, trading low. Is that is that how you see it? I do, Larry. Um, just as a backdrop, uh, I found that the dominant goal on the daily charts is one that averages about 40 trading days. That's approximately two months. Now, that's a variable cycle. Like all cycles, it expands and it contracts. But over the long haul, uh, if you look at several years worth of data, 
plot all the bottoms, you'll find the average uh, trading cycle falls right 40 trading. Uh, in the near term, uh, since the beginning, the high January, I think, is probably going to stand for the for the bulk of this year. Uh, mm -hmm. That represented a uh, what I call a 49 month cycle up, and I think we're heading down into as you and I have discussed in the past. We're heading down into October, so we're only about halfway there right now. Uh, but but more to the point to the question about the uh, the trading cycle pattern. Uh, if we count from the February 9th low into the uh, the low we had on the 2nd of April, that was 34 trading days. That's a Fibonacci number, as you know. The next low occurred on May the 3rd, 23 trading days later, which is approximately 21. So uh, if I add uh, 34 days from the May 3rd low and I add 55 days from the April 2nd low, that takes me to June 19th. Mm -hmm. So long-winded answer to your question, I think the next trading cycle low occurs in the vicinity of June 19th, plus or minus a, a day or two left or right. Uh, in the That's very, right. very short term, yeah, we, we are probing for a little bit of a low here. I think we will hit some kind of a temporary low this week, bouncing off the 50-week uh, the uh, moving average and uh, up for a few days and then right back down to a, a little bit of lower low, somewhere around the 19th of June, Larry. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now, the, the other question that I wanted to ask is, um, when we're when we're looking at these charts, do you do these by hand, or do you do you use a calculator? How do you how do you do the? Because you've got to have a spreadsheet or something that uh, uh, keeps you lined up for where you're supposed to be. The the the, the listener is asking, how do you do it? The way I do my analysis is I print uh, paper charts out, lay them on my desk, and then. Uh, make pencil annotations of all the highs and the lows, and I love it. <laughs> count count various Fibonacci counts from from highs and lows. And I have uh, a number of uh, uh, little plastic tools that assist me with Fibonacci ratio analysis. And then I have a multitude of spreadsheets that I wow okay. that I input the data and uh, look at a number of indicators, oscillators, and so forth to, to put it all together in my head. And I come up with some. Uh, some premise about where I think things are heading. Stan, did you ever know Chuck Plank? You know, he was the fellow that did a lot of Fibonacci work. He was an engineer uh, from, um, not Lytton, but uh, TRW. And he was my customer there at uh, Drexel. He was, uh, and he was very heavily into Fibonacci. He never went to the meetings very much because he was sort of a recluse. So we'll take a no, break. Larry, you stay with us. I don't know. Okay, stay with us. Stan Harley, Stan Harley Market Letter. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Thinker Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. 
see the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a question um, from Steve Rhodes for you, Stan, and that is, um, the from the April 2nd, if you take 40 trading days, that comes in as yesterday did did you mention that i i did i think you mentioned that there was a possibility there was a low coming in is that correct uh, well <clears throat> i i think the dominant trading cycle averages 40 trading days uh, mm -hmm. but i'm not measuring 40 trading days from the april 2nd low um what i am doing though is is uh looking for a fibonacci clustering utilizing the february 9th low the april 2nd low in the May 3rd low. Um, it's hard to visualize okay. this on the radio, I know, but if I had mm -hmm. 89 trading days to the February 9th low, 55 to the April 2nd, and 34 to the May 3rd, I get a clustering around June 19th, and I think that will be our next trading, trading cycle low. Okay, that makes pretty good sense to me. Now, the next question, I don't know if you can even answer this or not, if you want to, but if a person had to get started learning what you're learning, I mean, it's a lifetime of stuff, but if you had to pick one or two books to start out learning what you do, Stan, would you mind sharing to folks what uh, what you would start with? Larry, one of the early primers I picked up uh, and helped me a lot was a book you and I have discussed, uh, J.M. Hurst's uh, The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing. It's a 1968 book. Uh, the methods were, by today's standards, a little bit primitive. Uh, he did uh, envelope mapping with uh, pencil and crayon, so to speak. But nevertheless, the, the concepts are valid even today. Uh, that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would probably start with that. Um, there are, uh, what else? Walter Brezard uh, did some very good uh, um, books yes, uh, on, uh, yes, on uh, cycles analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several others, and the names escape me for the moment here. I, I wish I had thought to write a list down ahead of time. But well, uh, the only other one well, I can think of is uh, Garrett's book. You know, the torque analysis, stock market cycles. It was at the same time as uh, Hearst's book. The problem was it was yes. twenty nine ninety five at McGraw Hill, and Hearst's book was only eight ninety five. And you know, back in those days, it was nineteen seventy. Uh, you know, that was a lot of money. So they only sold 200 copies of the uh, book by uh, William Garrett. Anyway, I listen, Garrett's, Stan. I have I, Garrett's book. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a little tough to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That The understatement is like trying to decode the pyramids. You're absolutely correct. Yes. But he was a very smart man. I was fortunate enough to meet his wife back in uh, 1992. Bryce Gilmore found some things in that book that he really liked, and he asked me to try to contact her. And he was a broker for Walston and Company in Hawaii, but his only account was his family. Uh, they owned a, uh, a farming operation, and when they sold it, he had investments, uh, ba mainly bonds. He never put it; he never traded stocks. He followed the stock market, but he did all bonds. And when uh, he passed away, she gave all of his books to the University of Arizona, and a week later, all the books were stolen. Oh no! And uh, 
Yeah, and that's uh, anyway. Clarice came to uh, San Luis Obispo, and we sent her up to after we visited where her for a day. We went up to send her to Monterey to visit her brother, but she told us all about her husband and everything and all the things that he did. But he was very sad that the book only um, sold 200 copies, and I think it was one of the more better books that uh, it's out there. But boy, like you say, it's not an easy read. That's 100 percent for sure. Stan, listen, how would the folks reach you if they wanted to get a copy of your newsletter? And also, can we have you on right around the 19th of June again, if uh, if we could, just to uh, say in a couple of weeks, just to see how good you are? <laughs> <laughs> You're you're already good, Stan. Yeah. We're just going to we're just going to we're just going to reiterate it. <laughs> hey, Larry, it, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> okay, good. Right or right or wrong, uh, I have a website, HarleyMarketLetter.com, that folks can log on to. Okay, listen. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you soon. We're going to go out for dinner as soon as I get back, and we'll get to reminisce the old days of uh, pen and pencil and looking at charts. Thanks again, Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. God bless you, Stan. Take it easy and stay you, warm. <laughs> I will indeed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, folks, let's see what we're doing here in the markets. Probably rallying again like we usually do. Let's take a look. Yes, we are rallying again just like we usually do. Um, we're getting up to some pretty interesting spots here uh, in some of these markets. Take a uh, close eye here where we are around 24,550 in the market, uh, stock market, folks, because at that level, you're looking at a 382 retracement from the high that we made way back here a long, long time ago. So keep that in mind. It's going to be a very interesting one, you know, to take a look at. And we've seen some of these other markets jump around quite a bit, too. So just be careful. Always use stops, and you're going to be far off because – far better. Because if you don't use a stop, you're basically telling the market that you know more than it does. And believe me, that's not going to work. One of the things that I wanted to do today was to talk about Harry Micus' work from the Merck, uh, little cards that he used to pass out. And one of the things that uh, he always really used to preach about, and that is that uh, never trade money. You know, don't even think about the money. You know, put the position on because you think you're right and don't think of it as money because if you do, you're going to most probably get into some type of problem because money will affect you're thinking, and that really is what's happening when you're looking at the monitors. Whenever you're looking at that monitor, folks, you're looking at something that is a little difficult to comprehend. So pay you know, close attention to that because that monitor is not your friend. It's a mirror of all the imperfections that you have in your psychology. And when you're dealing with money, that brings it out even more. And if you don't, you must trade with a stop loss because trading without a stop is like walking a tightrope without a net, for goodness sakes. You may think you need a net every time, but the time you need it is when you don't have it. And that's when you're in the big trouble. So you got to remember doing that. Using a stop helps you keep the emotional element out of what you're doing on these markets. That's really very important. Because you, you can't help maintain dis, men, mental discipline on your own, folks. You do need help, and that's what stops are placed for. They're, they're placed for your protection and your protection only. That's very, very important to understand. And one other thing is that when you have a trade that goes from a winner, it's very difficult to let that trade go to a loser. Now, if it's just a small amount, that's understandable. If you've got like two or three grand in something and you let it get back to, to zero, that's a really tough tough thing to do folks because you're you've given up two thousand of your hard-earned money so try to do to book some profits on some of these things you know that's one of the things that we preach here at tfnn is you gotta you know have some fun and make a couple of bucks so w once you get your original risk covered you ought to be able to at least cover some of your position and let the other part of it ride to a you know different level that's the way i would uh, approach it if i were looking at it so keep in mind that uh that's something that I think is relatively important to do as we're, as we're looking at some of these uh, other things. And one other thing that, that Harry uh, talked about, and that is that uh, you must have your own trading system. You know, you have to figure out, you know, what's good for you, whether it's a moving average or stochastics or pattern recognition or Fibonacci, whatever you think it is. But that's the one that you want to stick with and make sure that you watch to see that you follow the rules of your system and you'll be far better off than if you don't do that. And that's the, the real key, you know, to watching these things unfold. It's uh, it's very, very important to understand these things. So we've got a break coming up here. Pretty thing. And the final thing is, and I'll cover some of these others later, but trade not to lose, folks. Focus on the amount of money that you have at risk. 
not how much money you're going to make. Losers think how much money I can win and winners think how much money I can lose because they're always protecting their backside and that's the important thing. So let's remember that. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And just as a program reminder, tomorrow we're going to have Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management on. And the uh, on Friday, we're going to have a special guest. We're going to have Simon only of Sylvius Financial talking about these grain markets and particularly about the cotton, of course. But anyway, we'll be watching some of these as we go through. Uh, but anyway, I posted a chart here from Tim Bost. Uh, this is his cycle projection. This is very similar to what we're looking at in that Bradley model. But as you can see here, uh, there looks to be like some type of a low down here in uh, the end of July here. Uh, so we'll watch that as we as we look at this. Uh, so pay attention to these uh, price levels, folks, because, uh, you know, we are at an area where we've hit all of these major numbers. None of these numbers have changed uh, from where we were uh, last Friday. And, uh, you know, they've really, uh, you know, headed down a little bit. You know, we're down 500 points in the Dow. Of course, we've gained 300 of that back. But we're still uh, in a relatively uh, strong downtrend. So we want to watch that very closely. As far as the gold and the silver, uh, they've held up relatively well compared to where 
uh, they were, but uh, you know they still need to get moving out of this area. If you'll notice here in the gold market, I'll put this up here so you can take a look at it. We stopped at some pretty serious, oh, here we go, one second here. We stopped at some pretty serious support yesterday. And, uh, oh dear, hold on just a second here, just a second. And uh, hold on just a minute. Oh dear, I got a problem. Doggone it, this is difficult. Anyway, here's the chart on the gold. We stopped right at 11.92, 12.92 yesterday. That was a perfect 78% retracement from the 23rd of May, and it was also a 61% retracement from the 21st of May. And so if we can clear 13.10, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at at least 13.21 or so um, in, in that area of getting up into that area. If we get above 13.25, uh, we could have game. That's basically it, uh, what we're looking at. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks.